Hey there folks, it's Mark Johnson from tech-snobs.com. Today we're going to go ahead and do the full review on the HTC One X and this does run on AT&T's 4G uh, LTE network. Now I just want to start off by saying I've been using this uh, device pretty much as my daily uh, driver for the past, uh, say about three weeks now. And I'm really, I'm really impressed. Um, it's a very, very fast device. Um, overall, you know, the, the build quality is, is very good. It does use a uh, polycarbonate um, material, which is basically just a hard plastic. And uh, it's very sturdy. It feels good in the hand. It's very lightweight. Um, and it just feels good. I mean, you know, honestly, when I've used other devices like a Galaxy Note, or even some of the Razer Max series or the Razer regular Razer series. Um, those are a little wider, but this one does feel good, very, very good and nice in the hand. So I do give a lot of props to um, you know, HTC, HTC on that. And basically, you know, when I look at it comparing to like the the Lumia 900, it's the same type of, you know, material. So if you kind of like that feel, you know, as far as the, you know, the plastic feel, it feels very good. Doesn't feel real cheap or flimsy. So that's a very, uh, very good thing. Now, I will say is I'll go ahead and run through uh, some of the hardware specs on it. It is a dual core 1.5, unlike the European version that is a, um, a quad core. But honestly, this you know matches, if not even beats, that in a lot of the benchmarks that I've seen. So that's a very, very, uh, a very good thing with that. And another thing I will say about it. It's just that there's a lot of things. That, and one thing about it, it doesn't have a lot of onboard storage. So it does have 16 gigs. But honestly, now with the Google Music um, and a lot, you know, it does give you 25 gigs of Dropbox storage just for using a Sense 4.0 device, which is, does have Sense 4. It really makes it, um, you know, it, you really don't need it, honestly. I, mean, I, I haven't really got to a point where I'm feeling, though, that I uh, need a lot of storage. And then with it also being LTE, I'm going to do a speed test. The radios and everything on this do tend to work rather well. Uh, I actually haven't had any, you know, problems in that regard. And let's see what kind of speeds I get now. Yeah, and even now I'm getting, you know, and this is in the evening. This is your rush hour, you know, near 5 o'clock in the evening. And I'm getting 25 megs down and nearly, oh, it looks like about, three and a half megs up almost four megs up and that the upload varies but yeah that, I've, I've seen a lot of great speeds on this anywhere from 26 megs down 32 and 33 so overall just the speed on this you know it, it definitely just it does the job I mean it's just it's overall just a very very nice device so when I really look at it there's some other things I want to talk about Android 4.0 with Sense 4 is I like Sense personally, and I do think that it adds a lot to the device as far as shortcuts, and especially with Ice Cream Sandwich. Now, it does, it does have some capacitive buttons here at the bottom. It does have one in the middle, which brings you to the home screen. Then it does have a, a multitask button where you type that, and it brings you into the multitask. And then when you get in here, you can just swipe the apps away. But And it does have a back button. But one thing I do like about it is like if you hold your finger down on the screen, You'll get to the widgets very easily. And then once you find a widget you like, you can pretty much just slide over to the, um, let's find Google Drive here. You can just slide it over to an open screen. And then once the screen turns green, um, you'll be, you know, you'll be good to go with that. So I really do like that. I think that's a very good, um, you know, touch, a nice touch, you know. And it just makes Android easier to use. I just think it's easier to use, especially for somebody, you know, that doesn't, you know, say they're migrating from an iPhone and they're wanting to go into Android and try it out. Using a, a device that has a skin on it, whether it be a TouchWiz or a Sense, um, I think it overall makes it easier to use. Now, I do like stock ice cream sandwich, but there's a lot of things in that where if you don't already know, if you don't like tinkering around, you, it's not going to be the most user friendly all the time. So definitely keep that in mind when you're looking at different, you know, Android 4.0 devices. They really start to come out this year. So uh, you know, definitely. And then overall performance, I do say that, you know, I do know that Samsung is going with two gigs of RAM uh, on their devices, 
And this one does have one gig, and I think, I mean, that's fine. I'm not going to, you know, really harp on it too much. But when I do go in there and I look, I don't know if I better get this on camera. But I'm only got, like, right now, 128 megs free out of a gig. So, you know, it that's kind of, you're like, what in the heck? Like, what is this thing doing that takes so much RAM? And that, a lot of it is just Android. There's stuff running in the background. But... You know, it does, although it really doesn't affect it when it gets to the point, you know, of day-to-day -day use. But there have been times where I've got to the point where if I hit the, go back to the home screen here and there, whether I'm on the web or I'm doing some other application, I'll just see a loading in the middle of the screen. it would just say loading there for a couple seconds. Now, I don't know if that's just the issue with this particular device. It doesn't happen a whole lot, but I have seen that happen. And uh, it could be, you know, due to another app I have installed on here. So, you know, who's to say if, if that's a widespread issue or not. But I haven't, um, I haven't really been seeing a lot of people talk about that if they've even come across it. Another thing I do like is the camera quality, which basically at the end of the day, it really um, is very, very good. It's probably as good as the, the iPhone 4S. Turn this volume up. And... Uh, I just like how, you know, you can click on it, it zooms, and then you can hold it down, and then you get the burst mode, which can give you up to 200 photos. Um, and then what I like about that is once it's done, it gives you all the photos at the bottom, and then you click on best shot, and then it will actually delete all of them, and then save the best shot for you. Um, which is a very nice feature. I do like that. And I do like it also has in the camera, when I go into the camera, I hit this button at the top, and then there's a lot of um, filters. There's depth of field. There's this dots filter, which is pretty cool. Mono, which is very nice. Uh, let's see what else we got. Country. I mean, it's got like a slew of filter, you know, a la, you know, Instagram. So overall, I mean, that's definitely a high um, point to the devices, the camera. And uh, overall, but this is a gorgeous screen. I mean, you got the Super LCD 2 uh, 720p display. And, I, and honestly, it's the best display I've ever seen. Now, I've heard that the Evo 4G, which is a variant of this, actually looks better. And I want to get my hands. I'm gonna get my hands on one of those within this next week, so I can do some comparisons. But I really do love the screen on this. It really does stand out. And I think that um, you know, obviously, if you you know, with the video footage, let's see if I can find a YouTube video. Um, what I'll do is I'll cut Wi-Fi back on, and then we'll go to a YouTube clip. Let's see what we can find here. So I'm gonna go on to YouTube and I'm gonna play and see if we can get some good quality on here. So yeah, if you look at that, I'm looking at the I mean look at the quality of that that screen. Very, very very, very good quality there. Um, it's great quality. So I definitely like the you know the video playback, the media playback, all that is just absolutely fabulous on it. And and you really can't go wrong. I mean it's one ninety nine. They did have some customs issues where you know, you couldn't find it, and um, I do think that, you know, with that being said, it's, um, you know, it, it, it's hard to find because, you know, they had some patent issues, and evidently they've gotten those resolved, and now you can find them, but, yeah, I definitely highly recommend this device. I mean, you look at the, the battery is about, eight, I think it's 1850 milliamp hour. Um, it gets you through the day. Uh, I definitely depend on use. I mean, it's definitely one of the better Android experiences with the battery but it, it, you know it still doesn't compete you know to the uh you know the razor max 3300 milliamp hour but um it's still very very good and and considering with it being a 720p screen and so forth i mean it definitely holds up rather well you know with that so I, i'll be honest with you this is the best android device i've used you know and obviously that could change with the you know galaxy s3 and there's rooms of a droid razor HD coming, but this this right now is definitely the fastest. Um, it runs the best. The apps run great. The screen is great. I mean, there's really not much you can't like about this device. I mean, it, it just overall runs rather well. So, 
you know, just keep that in mind. You know, if you're on AT and T and you're looking for Android, this is definitely the one to get. It is at one ninety nine on a two year contract. Um, you can get it for five forty nine off contract. So yeah, be sure to check out more. I'll be doing some more um, follow ups with this. And I'm actually while we're talking about it, I I show you another device I'm impressed with. Obviously, is the none other than HTC One S. And just comparing it to that, I mean, these are I kind of like the build quality of the One S a little bit better. And at first when I used the One S, I, I didn't really think that the screen resolution was all that you know big a deal with this being um, a QHD display. But looking at them side by side, and you probably won't see on camera, it, it's a world of difference. I mean, I could see when I had the same wallpapers up, I mean, it, it was like night and day. And the only other thing with the One S, when I you know look at the both of them, it doesn't have the uh, NFC. So, but... I will say this, I just want to show you some of the comparisons with the thinness of, of the two devices. Um, the One S is crazy thin. I mean, it, it's very thin. So I'll be back with a review on that one too here shortly. But I just wanted to show you these two because they're really, um, you know, if you're on T-Mobile, it's going to be obviously the One S. And then if you're on AT&T, you're going to have the, the One X. So be sure to check me out for more uh, on the site. Check out more. Uh, excuse me, check me out on YouTube as well. Um, I have a full channel up here going. And then I also have some things going on um, tech-snobs.com. Thanks for watching. Take care.